Welcome back. All right, so Edmonton and LA, and it, it almost happened again, didn't it, Edmonton? You know, it, it's an interesting series between these two teams in that Edmonton looks like they got everything under control, and then they kind of don't. Tonight, of course, it works in their favor, and we'll see how things go from here now the series is going to LA, because during most of this season, Edmonton's been better on the road than at home. So it's Corpusella versus Skinner, rematch. Uh, Velarde returning to the lineup for the Kings. I thought he had a decent game. And it's 234 in when the first shot on net goes in. It's Derek Ryan from Dreisaitl. Uh, it was a rush chance. Uh, there was a shot by Dreisaitl. The rebound ends up coming over to Ryan. He scores there. Uh, Nurse then has a blast that's held. The Oilers press at five and a half minutes. Uh, Broberg has a shot that's caught and held. Seven minutes in, the shots are 4 nothing Edmonton. So they're, they're not giving the Kings anything out there at all. Uh, we get a power play for the Kings. There's an early clear by the Oilers. Uh, the Kings then set up. They cycle. There's a shorthanded two-on-one. Kane's denied there. That's killed off. The Kings still don't have a shot on net. There's nothing going right for the Kings at this point in the game. Uh, the Oilers press after it's done. The Oilers then, they have a rush that draws them a power play. Uh, Costin had hit the post before that. McDavid then has a shot that deflects out during said power play, and then they would score. On a great pass from McDavid, Dreisaitl buries it at 12.06. Bouchard with the secondary assist. It's 12.06 in. The Kings still do not have a shot on net. So that was the Oilers' only power play of the game. So they're now, what, one for four in the series, I think? So that's pretty good. Uh, Kings look to answer. They can't get to the net, though. The shots are 10 nothing with six minutes left. Kupari has a net drive that's defended. The Oilers clear. Uh, Ayafalo. He fires one high on a rush, and then the Kings get some shots late in the period. Uh, the Kings would press in the final minute. Things get pushy on a hold by Skinner, but after the first period, it's 2-0 Oilers. The shots are well in their favor, and it looks like, yeah, this one's probably going to be an Edmonton win. But again, it felt a lot like that in the first game. We know how that turned out. So second period, early press by the Oilers. Kulak has a shot that's held as the Oilers hem the Kings in. Not much going on for L.A. still. Kupari has a rush chance that saved. McDavid's then robbed on a two-on-one. The Oilers press after that. McLeod has a shot that's blocked. The Kings clear. The shots six minutes in are seven to four for the Oilers. So while the Kings have already managed more shots than they had in the entire first period, still the Oilers are outplay outplaying them and outshooting them. Uh, Bouchard is denied. Hyman couldn't bury a rebound. The Kings get a power play. Moore uh, couldn't bury one due to Ekholm defending him. A really good game by Matthias Ekholm tonight. Uh, again, he's been one of my favorite defensemen for a very long time, and since he arrived in Edmonton, it has been really a display of how good he is on the blue line, and I think Ken Holland, again, deserves a lot of credit for going out and getting him from Nashville. So, uh, Kaliev fires one wide, that power play was killed off, Dreisaitl then has a rush chance that's defended, the Kings had a two-on-one, that's defended as well. Uh, Oilers press with seven minutes left, Arvidsson that fires one high, uh, lots of one and done for the Kings. This is just, you know, they get that one shot and then it's out. Whether it's it goes off the glass and rims out or whether it's the Oilers get it and put it out. They weren't getting those really prolonged presses. Uh, fans then call one. The referee doesn't. But then Dano buries his own rebound to get the Kings on the board. He scores from Kempe and Anderson at 14.38. Uh, the Kings then look to tie. They draw themselves a power play. Uh, there was a shorthanded two-on-one rush. Kempe comes back and breaks that up. Uh, Skinner then denied Arvidsson, so Skinner, good game for him. Then there's a shorthanded rush by McLeod, but then we end up with 16 seconds of 5-on-3 because Kane with a delay game call, I don't know what he was thinking, smacking that puck from up there. I, I'm not sure, but it's a delay game. Doughty has a blast that's held. Good PK work again by Ekholm. They killed that off. They survived the 5-on-3. However, at 1918, on a turnover rush, short side, Velarde just finds a little bit of room and he puts it in. Uh, Trevor Moore with the assist. And I had to write up there, how is this tied? Mon like Edmonton had controlled maybe 36 of the first 40 minutes, and yet it's a tie game at two. Uh, post then for Kupari on a break. So the LA Kings almost had a lead. If he got that, we could be having a very different discussion right now. So it's 2-2 after two, third period. Uh, McDavid has a net drive that's saved on the opening shift. Nurse then has a shot that's blocked. Kings press at a minute and a half. They're kept to the outside. But then on his own entry, on a turnover, Costin wires one at 220 from a distance. He gets that one. Uh, Arvidsson then has a blast that's caught and held as now the Kings need to answer and tie it up again. The shots are 7-4 to four for LA, seven minutes in. Kings press, but again, they're kept to the outside. Uh, Kane uh, jams at Corpusalo when he had the puck. You know, that's going to draw a crowd, and it did. 
Uh, Bugstad fires one wide on a rush. Gabrikov couldn't bury one as Ekholm steals it. Ekholm's name's all over the board, and, and just for good reason, he's not one of the three stars I would argue he should have been. One of those unsung three stars, right? So uh, the Kings press with six and a half minutes left. The teams exchange turnovers. Uh, Kopitar's denied. There's more pressure by the Kings. Good board play by Zach Hyman in his own zone. Uh, Grundstrom then has a net feed that's blocked. Ryan Nugent Hopkins fires one wide on a rush. Uh, there's a goalie pull, and then the Kings immediately go offside. So they, they do the right thing. Uh, they call a timeout with 118 left. That's when they went offside. Uh, the goalie pull happens again with 110 left, but with 46.6 seconds left, an icing by the Kings. So you get a face-off, and Kane would score at 1937. And he skates all the way in and puts it into the empty net. Drives me nuts when guys shoot at the empty net from the blue line when they have a straight line to the net. Just go in and just put it, because they miss, right? They miss, they go wide. So I was glad Kane did that. Dreisaitl with the assist. This series is now tied at one. Uh, Edmonton wins the game 4-2. to two. Uh, it looked like they might melt down and lose this one. They didn't. And so this is a key game for the Oilers to tie this up. Now they need to go and at least get the split in L.A. Uh, for the Kings, you're just looking to, ser to hold serve at home. You get that split on the road, and then you want to win both games at home. And then you have three chances to win the series. It just sounds so simple, doesn't it? Three stars in this one, Costin, Dreisaitl, and Deno. This is the only game where one of the three stars was for the losing team. Uh, so the shots on net are 11-3 Edmonton in the first, 14-11 Edmonton in the second, and 12-11 Edmonton in the third. The final shots, 37-25 for the Oilers. Power plays, LA 0 for 4. That's a big part of the storyline tonight. Uh, the penalty killing for Edmonton was excellent. 1 for 1 for Edmonton. So LA didn't take penalties, but when they took that one, it cost them. Uh, the hits, 59-49 to for Edmonton. So while the hits seem to be down a little bit tonight from where it was in Game 1, not in this one. The hits went up. So this is a series that's very physical. Uh, Corpusello, 33 saves on 36 shots at his end. And Skinner saved 23 out of 25 at his end. I thought Skinner had a better game two than he had game one. And I thought the Oilers did too. They, they did a better job of closing this one out, obviously. And so for the Kings, uh, they should be encouraged. This wasn't a blowout victory by any stretch. These teams are very closely matched. And we are still in a situation where we could see some upsets. But coming out of tonight, we have three series that are tied at one. The only team that's ahead 2-0 is Carolina. And so we will see tomorrow whether or not we see some more 2 nothings. I'm thinking we get some more 1-1 ties going into Game 3. Uh, I appreciate that. I like that. Uh, and, and, you know, seeing series go to six or seven games, it's always more entertaining and more interesting. But let me know your thoughts. Uh, can the Kings win both at home? Do the Oilers now have that momentum? Like I said, they normally play better on the road than they do at home. What do you think of their chances after tonight? Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And of course, I use magnets of old logos because it's fun to wear the classic jerseys too, especially when it matches logos. And it just matches up that way. Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. I don't do green screens. I don't do a bunch of all the editing and everything else. So I might as well have a ton of magnets. So there you go. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.